Hey YouTube, Adam here. Uh, I want to do a quick video of this machine that I'm getting ready to sell on eBay. Um, it came into my possession through a customer. Um, I'm going to put a few parts in it, get it listed, try to turn a little bit of a profit on it. Um, this is a Lenovo. Uh, this was right when they were switching over to the Lenovo. This is a Lenovo unit, not an IBM branded one. This is a ThinkPad R60. Um, I have a weakness for ThinkPads. I love them. Um, but I don't really collect them. I don't have any use for an old machine like this, so we're going to get it posted and out of here. Um, if you look on the side here, we've got VGA. It actually has a modem. That's how old it is. Uh, this is from the Windows XP era. Uh, Ethernet, audio, uh, an expansion slot. On the back, all we have is power, a couple of USB ports, uh, DVD or uh, CDRW drive. Uh, this panel here is where the hard drive is located. We're going to swap out an SSD in here. And uh, on the bottom here, see the typical uh, Lenovo markings. It's got a docking port for uh, a docking station. And this unit has an aftermarket battery, but this battery actually works pretty well. So. We're going to go ahead and open this thing up, replace the CPU, check out the RAM situation, and this battery is not easy to put back in, and uh, upgrade to an SSD, get this thing posted on eBay. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure where this is going to fit in, um, but I'm doing a little bit of a comparison of an old Lenovo or IBM depending on the labeling. They were made by Lenovo at this point. They was actually owned by Lenovo. Um, ThinkPad. So this is an R60. I have a T60 that I'm working on as well. Getting some machines ready to be sold. Um, I'm going to be putting this uh, SSD in here that I have lying around. Uh, I just took the CPU out which are actually socketed on these machines. This is the old CPU. This is a the Core 2 or Core Duo, not a Core 2 Duo, a Core Duo 1.66 gigahertz, 2 megabyte, 666 megahertz uh, bus. So it's a 32 bit processor. It is actually dual core, but it's only 32 bit. Now we are going to go ahead and not quite take this up to the maximum that this machine supports because I'm using, I have a, this is a T7400. I have a T7600 that's going in the um, the other ThinkPad because I'm actually going to keep this one. This one's going up for sale. But I have this processor in my collection anyway, so I'm going to throw this in and see if it actually works. Um, let's actually look. How are they keyed? I wasn't really paying attention. Looks like there's a... The keying is there in the corner. If we look here, there's our little mark. Not sure if any it feels like a pin might be bent on this or something. Weird working with an Intel uh, relic. It's not modern, but this is probably about the end of when anything would have pin. Yeah, there is a bent pin there. Let's see if I can't get up close here. Get a bent pin. What do you expect for a couple bucks? Well, we can get it straight enough. Usually not that bad, just kind of popping a pin back. Yeah, there it goes. Um, it's got a pretty tiny little cooler. This is the cooler. It barely weighs anything. I cleaned up the crusty old thermal compound, so we'll set the old CPU aside, don't know what I'll ever do with it. I actually don't have a properly sized screwdriver handy, so we'll just see if a knife will... Not a proper use of a knife, I apologize. It's not a proper use of a lot of things going on here. Alright, that seems like it's good. So I'm going to get this thing reassembled here, and we'll boot into Windows and see what the performance is like. This is a pretty decent processor. These are capped this uh, at um, 
3 gigs of RAM. Even if you run a 64-bit version of Windows, it can't support, the controller just can't support more than 3 gigs on the R60 or the T60. It's just a limitation. I, they probably have pretty much the same motherboard, I assume. We'll see. I'll take the other one apart and we'll have a look inside um, and see the difference because I'm going to put that 7600 in that machine. Uh, but I'm going to get some this cleaned up, this new CPU cleaned up because it came with some gunk still on it. And we'll get some new thermal compound on that. And get this thing reassembled here. Alright, so we get the cooler back in place. While we're in here, I just wanted to take a look. I think this is already maxed out with memory, but we might as well check while we're in here. So it's got one gig. Yeah, it's got three gigs already in. So the memory is not very easy to access in this. It's not the worst, uh, but we do have to remove the palm rest on this machine. And newer thing pads, there's just a panel on the bottom, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, so I'm gonna get this thing reassembled and we'll boot into Windows. It already has a, a recent Windows 10 um, installation that I just restored. So we'll get booted up, see how it goes. Although I probably will have to install 64-bit Windows. So I'm gonna reinstall Windows and then we'll be back. All right, we've got it back together. No extra parts, which is always good. Getting into the BIOS here. So you can see we've got Intel Core 2 CPU 7400. So that's good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get Windows installed and I'll be right back. Alright, so the machine is off all the way. I've got updates installed. Um, I tested the battery, it's working. It's an aftermarket battery, but it is working. So we're going to go ahead and from a cold boot here. See how long it takes with this new CPU to get into Windows. It should be done installing all the updates, so it should be a pretty accurate test here. I have a generic user account set up right now. And that was not terrible. As I say, I have no internet. It definitely is connected to my Wi-Fi. Or it should be. And it says it is. Not connected. Connect. It was connected. I don't know why it didn't automatically reconnect. Huh. Well, that's unusual. I'm going to have to do a little troubleshooting on that. I don't know if there's a driver problem. The Wi-Fi was just working. Is the Wi-Fi switch on? There's a switch on this. really hope I didn't mess up the antenna while I was in there, because I have to disassemble the whole thing again. Where is the Wi-Fi switch on this unit? Is that it? I mean, I assume... Now that, that ejects the drive. Oh, yeah, it is on the front. There it is. Let's switch off the Wi-Fi and switch it back on here. All right, at any rate, uh, let's see. Take a look at the device manager here, see if all the drivers are installed correctly. And, yeah, there's nothing not showing up. Let's look under... Yeah, it shows it is being connected. Hmm. I mean, uh, installed. This has Intel integrated graphics, which are old garbage integrated graphics, of course. Uh, if we let's just make sure system. So you can see here, for some reason, it's recognizing it as a T20 or T7600, even though it's. I looked on the chip; it's definitely a 7400. Um, We've got our three gigabytes, 64-bit uh, operating system, and Windows itself is actually, you know, as responsive as Windows 10 generally is. It's not bad. Windows 10 does a, a pretty good job, I think, of running on older hardware. This is probably about the oldest thing you could run it on. 
it's not going to be super responsive or anything like that. We're definitely not going to be able to watch high definition video. Uh, but, you know, for checking email and stuff, this, this would be doable. It's definitely not, not the worst. Alright, so we're all connected with internet access here. Let's see what it can actually, if anything, do. We'll go to the old YouTube. It's weird typing like this. I'm having to kind of reach around the camera. It's not exactly encouraging how long it's taking to respond here. YouTube is a pretty rough site. And I have no idea what version of Internet Explorer we're even using here. But it's kind of coping. Let's take a look at what it can do playing a video here. Now I don't know what it's going, this is one of my videos so on my gaming channel so I have the, oh boy, it played the Nomad. Turn this down so it's not two of me talking. Uh, so, let's full screen this and see what we've got here. Oh boy. So with the integrated graphics, switching over is definitely not a fast thing, but it's it's viewable. I assume this is like 3... What are we looking at? 480p? It's not going to be able to do 60 frames a second. I already know that. Let's see what happens if we switch over. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be happening. Oh! Actually... It kind of is. It's glitching, but it's kind of doing it. It's better than I expected, to be honest. Poor little thing. What's our, uh... Oh, if we can even get to the task manager here. So obviously our CPU is at 100%. Not quite all the time, but I think it's because it's just giving up <laughs> this time here too. But, you know, it, it kind of works. I don't know why this is. Is this always white? That's weird. I don't know. Uh, so YouTube, you could do it in standard definition. I'm kind of curious. Let's try switching this to uh, if I can get the system to respond here. I would like to kind of to switch it to 720p. I don't want to open a window. Thank you, YouTube. It gets a little squirrely trying to use this because you can't always tell what you've actually clicked on. Alright, 720 I feel like the 720 performance is somehow worse. I don't know what to make of that. But anyway, it's it's somewhat usable. Oh, there it goes. It just plays slow. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the, the high definition videos is not going to happen. But uh, you could definitely use this every day. I, I have a second one that I'm going to be using for um, some mechanic tasks that I have. I have a, an Onboard Diagnostics 2 um, reader that uses a Windows app that I can uh, use um, with my car to get 
diagnostic information from it. So I'm going to be using my uh, T60 for that purpose and just as a backup computer in my garage. Uh, so I'll do a little bit of a... Cons I've already... Uh, but this machine I'm not holding on to. I don't have any need for another old ThinkPad. So it's going to be on its way to eBay. Um, Alright, we're going to end this just letting you know this unit's uh, boxed up because it already sold. Uh, it sold for about $100, $99.99 uh, plus shipping and handling. So that's a pretty decent profit for not much work. I had the extra parts lying around. Um, I got the machine for basically free. So uh, it's a nice pickup here. Um, like I said, I don't really collect laptops. I'm, I'm into vintage computers and stuff, but laptops have a pretty limited, they're like they're like tools to me. The laptops that I have I actually use for stuff and once I don't have a use for them, they're out the door. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank you for watching this. Um, I do have a T60 that I'm going to be going over as well that I got as part of the same thing. That's going to be getting posted on eBay as well. So uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.